Welcome to Time Tunnel Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is smile. S-M-I-L-E. Really? You bet your life! Elgin American. Creators of America's most beautiful compact, smartest cigarette cases, finest dresser sets, presents Groucho Marx in the Elgin American show, You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here's that sterling Elgin American, the one, the only... Groucho! You don't say. Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's first to try and take it away from me? A pair of youngsters who are going steady, Groucho. They were selected by the studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, Anna Jung and Dave Mock meet Groucho Mark. Welcome to the Elgin American program. And if you say the secret word at any time we're talking, I'll pay you $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, your name is uh, Anna Jung? That's right. Where are you from, uh, Anna? I was born in Canton, China. Does your last name have any, have any English meaning, uh, Anna? Not to my knowledge. Mm-hmm. Does it have any meaning without your knowledge? <laughs> what does your name mean, uh, Dave? Well, uh, my Chinese name is Jun, which means genuine, and that's my uh, middle name, it's John. Oh. And what does Mark stand for, title? <laughs> I don't know. I have two in my bathroom. Huh? <laughs> Sam and Irving, I call them. <laughs> Really? When are you two going to be married? I don't know if we are going to get married. We haven't well, talked about it. Will the ceremony be in English or Chinese, huh? <laughs> I don't know if we are going to get married. You're kind of stubborn, aren't you, huh? <laughs> uh, Dave, do you understand Chinese? Oh, I speak a little of it. Mm-hmm. Well, it won't make any difference. The wedding ceremony is always Greek to the bridegroom anyway, huh? <laughs> Uh, Anna, how did you meet the reluctant dragon here? Huh? <laughs> well, it was one of the dancers, and he went stag, and my escort very impolitely left me with him, so I guess he was more or less stuck. <laughs> you consider that he was stuck? Um, what do you think? I would say, au contraire. <laughs> I only wish I knew what it meant. Huh? <laughs> Uh, may I ask how old you are, Anna? I'm 21. Mm-hmm. And how old are you, Dave? 24. Is that in years or in yen? <laughs> you don't count years by yen. You don't, huh? Well, I've got a big yen to be 21 again. Huh? <laughs> well, I think you make a charming couple, and to prove it, we have some ideal wedding gifts for you. Fenneman? <laughs> Fenneman, take good care of them, huh? For Anna, this lovely engraved dresser set by Elgin American. It's finished in rich silver, the finishing touch for your dresser. That's beautiful. Thank you. For Dave, we have Elgin American's hand-engraved sterling silver cigarette case that holds 20 regular or 16 king-size cigarettes. It's really nice. Is there any difference, Anna, between uh, Chinese uh, wedding customs and ours? Oh, yes, there are a few. Um, the custom of the, uh, the bride's family to give uh, gifts. Like a dowry, huh? Oh, well, similar. I used to think a dowry was where you got milk until I got married. <laughs> I got milk plenty, huh? <laughs> Are there any specific gifts that you're supposed to get? I mean, do they indicate the... Uh... Well, I don't know, but of course the, uh, the gifts uh, depend a lot upon your finances. If you have about a thousand friends, you can't give everyone a, a cigarette case. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wish you'd try, because that's our racket here. Huh? <laughs> now, Dave, uh, in China, is, is the groom the same miserable scapegoat he is here? Huh? In China, he's the master of the house. He's the master of the house in China? <laughs> and why does everybody want to take a slow boat to China? <laughs> now, Dave, what bad habits are you going to give up after you're married? I haven't talked about getting married yet. <laughs> Doesn't he have any bad habits you're going to correct, Anna? 
Well, I thought I, I would correct him. He has a few, you know, like staying up too late at night and excessive smoking. For a girl who, who isn't going to marry him, you say you know a lot about him. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you've been shanghai huh? <laughs> Now, Dave, what was there about Anna that uh, you found particularly appealing? Well, she was uh, intellectual. She's good company and... She's cute, too. <laughs> Very good dancer. Very good dancer. Well, I don't know what other qualifications you would want. <laughs> Come home after a hard day's work and you want a big meal. <laughs> Your wife is in the kitchen doing the Charleston, right? <laughs> That'll certainly put you in great shape for the evening. <laughs> What did you find particularly appealing about uh, Dave? Well, he has uh, nice wavy hair, and he's very sweet, and I think he has a charming smile, don't you? You just, you just said smile, you just said smile, and that's the secret word, and that means you what just want you to one heart. Oh, no! <laughs> There it is. Congratulations. Now, wipe that smile off your face and let's get back to business here. Eh? Now, Dave, have you given any thought to what marriage is going to be like? For example, can uh, Anna cook your favorite dish? Anna, what is his favorite dish? Oh, well, his uh, favorite American steak. But I, I think he likes the uh, shark skin soup a little better. Shark skin soup? No, shark skin. Shark skin. <laughs> <laughs> That isn't a fin you got, that's a hundred you got. <laughs> well, that sounds like a very interesting dish. How long does it take to prepare shark skin soup? Oh. <laughs> It'll take a couple of shark days. Shark skin soup. Approximately. Takes one day to catch the shark, I suppose. <laughs> now, well, you're an attractive couple, and I, I wish you to every happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Not right yet. <laughs> She's got a hundred dollars. Doesn't that change your attitude? <laughs> Now, in just one minute, you're going to work together for $1,500. You bet your life. But right now, I want you to pay attention to some interesting conversation. Say, Mary, when did you get a raise? I didn't. Why? That new compact of yours, it must have cost plenty. That's what I expected, too. It's an Elgin American, but it was only $4.95. No. Yes. Elgin American compacts always look like a lot more than they cost. Smart as tomorrow in fashion, master craftsman engraving to the last detail. Class. Mirrors, powder doors so flawless, they rival many other compacts that cost a lot more. Packaged with the luxury of a gem. Only Elgin American's leadership, only the greatest manufacturing facilities in the industry, can bring you first in fashion compacts, styled by top designers of Paris, New York, Hollywood. Compacts first in jewel-like perfection, first in value for so little money. Tomorrow, see them all including sterling silver and 14-karat gold. Also, Elgin American's companion line of American Beauty Compact, thriftily priced from $2.95. For yourself, for every woman on your gift list, you can't beat the greatest value of them all, exquisite, finest quality compacts by Elgin American. <laughs> Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500 question. You're going to play your bet your life. Fenneman, straighten them out on the roof. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. What question category did you select? Name the state. Name of the state, north or south. Is that right? Now, here's your first question. How much will you bet? Five. What state is immediately north of California? Oregon. Oregon is right. Yeah. They're on their way with $25. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. You're going to bet how much of the 25 this time? Fifteen. Remember, you're going to get married. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Fifteen. All right. What state is south of Georgia? <laughs> Come on. Make it, take a stab at it. The bell is tolled. The answer is Florida. They now have ten dollars. Now you now you've now reduced to ten dollars. <laughs> now how much of the ten dollars are you going to try this time? Five. All right. Now what state is immediately north of New Mexico? 
Utah. Uh, I'm sorry. The answer is Colorado. They now have five dollars. Well, now you've only got five dollars. All right, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. You're going to bet five dollars. What state is directly south of Oklahoma? Tennessee. No, I, I'm sorry. The answer is Texas. Well, apparently you two are penniless. <laughs> However, it isn't a very good advertisement having you leave here, Brooks, so I'll give you one more chance. You answer this correctly, and you'll win ten dollars. What president had the same name as Lincoln, Nebraska? <laughs> what president? Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln is right! <laughs> and good luck from Elgin American Compact. Stick around now. You might still get the crack at the big question. Double. Don't forget, you grabbed $100 in cash for saying the secret word. Groucho, our next couple has been in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know the secret word is smile. Perhaps they'll say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Joan Grant, a housewife, and Mr. Stuart Town from the State Department of Motor Vehicles. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for Elgin American Compact. And if you say the secret word at any time we're talking, you'll get $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Grant, you're, you're a housewife, huh? Yes. What does your husband do for a living, Mrs. Grant? He's a kneeler. He's a kneeler? A kneeler. What is a kneeler? Well, he stands by a furnace and anneals metal that's in the furnace. Does he walk around his knees at home? <laughs> no, he walks around in shorts. Hmm? <laughs> well, he can still be on his knees, you know. <laughs> How did you meet your husband, then? Well, he delivered Ms. my Ms. worms. Mrs. Grant. Uh, he I... delivered your... <laughs> I, uh, I read a book, and um, it told about this worm hobby, you know. And we lived on a lake, and we used to fish in the winter, you know, over the ice, and we always ran well, fish short. Fish in the winter, huh? Anyway, I thought it'd be nice to have all the worms we needed, and then you can always sell what you have left over. Yeah. Two dozen per quarter. So I said... <laughs> You ever crack any apples and get the worms out? <laughs> no, that isn't the right kind of a worm. Is, there a, is that a different kind of yes, a worm? Yes, these are special. I thought a worm was a worm. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, these are a special breed of worm, and they... Uh... A jump at a speckled bass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're real wriggly. And should I tell you the rest of it? <laughs> well, well anyway. I'm drinking it in, Mrs. Grant. <laughs> So he helped me, and he got interested, and he said he'd come back and help me with them because you have to water them twice a week and feed them, and then they have capsules. And when the they... worm takes capsules, no, <laughs> they breed, and then in three weeks you dump that box over, and there's thousands of little capsules, and each capsule has from one to twenty worms in it, and then you put those in another box, and in three months there are thousands of little worms. <laughs> and your husband does this in shorts. <laughs> That's how we met. That's how you met, eh? One day he thought it would well, be a good idea if we'd start raising our own little worms. That's what he said. <laughs> and did you try to worm out of it? <laughs> that was a good offer, so I took it. Uh, and how many little worms do you have now? Two. And do they have capsules, too? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Town, eh? Right. Stuart Town, eh? You're from the Department of Motor Vehicles, eh? Right. Are you, are you married? Yes, sir. How did you meet your wife? Were you wearing shorts at the time? <laughs> well, I, it's quite a while back. I don't recall, but I know that you we You don't were... remember how you met your wife? <laughs> no, I wore shorts or not. Oh. <laughs> well, let's say you didn't wear shorts. How did you meet your wife? <laughs> anyway. Let's say you were wearing longies. <laughs> well, it was the summertime. It was in the summertime. I, uh, I went over to Picnic, Brookside Park. Where is that? To, um, Pasadena. I looked all around, and over there, one side, I saw these two girls, and one of them was really nice. I said, well, there she is, so we'll go get her. And I spent the whole afternoon and evening dancing there, and first thing I know, we were engaged and we were married. Well, I'll teach you to keep out of Pasadena. Huh? <laughs> now, just, just what do you do at the Department of Motor Vehicles, Mr. Town? Well, I take the $2 fee from the people that come in for license, and I give them a written examination, a vision test. They get by that all right, I take them out on a road test. Well, what kind of uh, test questions do you ask them? Ask me some well, test questions. Um, how long would you put out your arm before you want to make a boulevard stop? 
Well, that depends on the length of your arm, doesn't it? <laughs> One more, Mr. Town. I'm pretty good at this. Huh? Well, suppose there's a uh, fire engine coming down the road. Yeah. How close could you follow behind it? I'd, go right, I'd go right behind it. Huh? Well, <laughs> that's wrong. That's against the law. I'll well, say you why? must not follow behind it. What do you want me to do? Go in front of it? <laughs> Happens, my God, I was caught in a hook and ladder. <laughs> I, had a, I had a hop all the way to Long Beach. <laughs> I was known as Hop Along Groucho. <laughs> would you say you're a careful driver, Mrs. Grant? Yes, I would. Well, mm-hmm. why do you think so? Huh? Well, I never drive too fast, and I always keep my eyes on the road. It's quite a trick. Aren't you afraid you'll run over them? <laughs> Well, you both passed my test with flying colors, and we have the perfect gifts for each of you from our sponsor. George. Right, Groucho. Mrs. Grant will love Elgin American's exclusive heart-shaped compact that's definitely different. It's jeweler's bronze that looks like gold. I think it's lovely. George, what have you got for the Department of Motor Vehicles here? Elgin American's popular cigarette case with today's smart leather-like look. This is very, very lovely, and I thank you. It's a pleasure to give it to you, Mr. Town. Now, let's get down to serious business. You're going to play, you bet your life, the Elgin American game for $1,500. Run your 20 bucks into more than our other couples, and you get the chance at the $1,500 question later. Fenneman, remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The young couple lost all their money, so the housewife and the motor vehicle man have a clear field. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. What question category did you select? On fruits. Varieties of fruits. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $10. What variety of fruit is a Jonathan? Apple. An apple. All right. <laughs> Well, for this we have $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of your $30 will it be now? 20 20 What variety of fruit is a Valencia? Orange. orange. An orange is right. <laughs> you're really climbing, Groucho. They have $50. You're climbing. You're up to $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to try? $40. What variety of fruit is a Satsuma? A Satsuma. Plum. A plum is correct. <laughs> Now they have $90. How much of the 90 are you going to risk? $70. What variety of fruit <laughs> is an anjou? A-N-J-O-U. Pear. Yeah. A pear is correct. <laughs> and they wind up with a grand total of $160. You wound up with $160. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from Elgin American Compacts. Now in just one minute, our last couple will play You Bet Your Life, and then we know who gets the $1,500 question. Right now... Listen to this. Oh, I left my lighter at the office. Here, use mine. You'd never leave this one behind. It's a socialite by Elgin American. Yes, everybody goes for Elgin American's terrific new socialite lighters. So beautifully designed and finished, they look like jewelry. And they work like magic. That's their marvelous magic action. It keeps the light going for others to use without pressure. Locks automatically for safety when closed. The most modern, surefire mechanism of any lighter made. Yet, these last words, socialite lighters for men and women, are priced from just four ninety five. Table models from nine ninety five. Values beyond compare. By all means, see them tomorrow at your leading store. And buy the finest lighters you can use or give. Socialite lighters by Elgin American. <laughs> Now then, we'll soon know who's going to earn the most money and get the chance of the $1,500 question. George, who's leading so far? Well, the housewife and the motor vehicle man are ahead with $160. And here's our final couple coming in from their waiting room off stage. They don't know the secret word is smile. And here they are, a girl softball player and a steam room masseur selected for the studio audience just before we went on the air. Charlotte Piojinski <laughs> and Dan Hurley meet Groucho Marx. Hello, folks, and welcome to You Bet Your Life. And if you say the secret word at any time we're talking, I'll pay you $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Charlotte, uh, how do you pronounce your name? Piojinski. Would you mind spelling it? P-I-E-C-H-O-C-I-N-S-K-I. Now pronounce it again. Piojinski. Comes out just the same. (laughs) Uh, You're a softball uh, player, uh, Charlotte? Yes. Uh, May I ask how old you are, Charlotte? You may. Okay, next question. How old are you? (laughs) Twenty-five. Twenty-five, huh? Well, you don't look at me. Are you sure you touched all the bases? <laughs> what position do you play, Charlotte? 
pitcher, first base, and outfield. Simultaneously? Are you married? Yes, sir. What does your husband do, Joe? He's a warehouseman. How'd you meet him? At the Palladium. I was... <laughs> what were you doing at the Palladium? You I... rascal, you. <laughs> went to the dance. I met him there. Alone? Yes. You went there alone? With my girlfriend. And did she uh, nab somebody there, too? <laughs> yes. That yeah, must be a pretty fatal fail, that Palladium. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Haley, uh, who are you? I'm her partner, the masseur. Well, stop flexing your biceps and tell me, uh... <laughs> where, where, where are you from, Dan? From Watts, California. From where? Watts. <laughs> this sounds like Abbott and Costello, huh? <laughs> okay, I'll buy it. Who's on third? Huh? <laughs> tell me a minute, Rob. Uh, what's on third? <laughs> What sort of clientele do you cater to at your fat rendering establishment? Huh? <laughs> we uh, take care of uh, lawyers, doctors, bankers, comedians, uh, <laughs> everything. Well, thanks for the warning. <laughs> well, you got all sorts of customers. That's a sort of a melting pot, huh? That's right. <laughs> Suppose I staggered into your boneyard for a once-over lightly. Uh, uh, just what would you do to me? Well, I'd uh, build up your chest. Ooh. <laughs> Put some muscle on in the right place and take off some of the back uh, abdu points. Uh, uh, <laughs> fix you up in general, condition you, give you massages and fix the bloodstream up and just overhaul your good. It may interest you to know that I have no blood. <laughs> that stream dried up years ago. <laughs> You ever argue with your customers, uh, Dan? No, sir. How about you, Josephine DiMaggio? Do you ever have arguments uh, playing softball? Yes. I have arguments with the coaches and umpires. Have you ever been chased to the showers by the umpire? A couple of times. <laughs> Did he ever catch you? No. <laughs> what kind of uniforms do you girls wear? Satin. Satin Yes, ones. we have... Blouses and long pants in the winter and shorts in the summer. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll come down some hot night and watch you play. <laughs> it's quite evident that the weather has a great deal to do with how you girls shape up. <laughs> you know, you've almost convinced me girls are as good as men ball players. Now, let's have a little test. Pretend you've just belted the ball over the fence for a home run. Do you slide head first or feet first? If I hit her over the wall, I'd walk home. <laughs> But I'll remember that when I take a soft girl ball player out. You know? <laughs> now, potholder, that's you, Mr. Hurley here. Right? As a masseur. Well, as a masseur, could you do uh, Charlotte any good? Oh, sure. I could slim her down in the right places. And, uh, well, maybe she doesn't want to go to the right places. <laughs> How would you like that, Charlotte? Let him try it. Well, I'd like to see him try it, too. As a matter of fact, I'd like to be your assistant. Well, we're happy to have you two as our guest tonight. In return, we have some lovely gifts from our sponsor. Lovely is right, Groucho. For Charlotte, this lovely sterling silver compact with 14 karat gold engraving and Elgin American, of course. Beautiful. And for Mr. Dan Hurley, this Elgin American cigarette case with a rich green leather look. Something to show off, eh, Mr. Hurley? Yes, sir. Nice. All right, now let's play your bet your life. You can beat the other two couples. You'll get a track at the $1,500 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George has gone off stage to remind our listeners. The housewife and the motor vehicle man are ahead with $160. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. What question category did you select? Uh, old ballads. Barbershop ballads? Barbershop ballads. That's, That's right. right. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Five. Yes. Jerry Fielding plays. You name the song. Play, Jerry. <laughs> Strawberry Blonde is right. We're off to a great start. I have $25. How much of your 25 will you risk? 15. 15? Is that all right with That's you? Right Which one are you? I'm her partner with Sue. No. <laughs> are you going to try $15? What is the name of this ballad? Caroline. 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 Caroline Moon? No. 
Can't you hear me calling That's Caroline? That's right. Can't you hear me calling Caroline? They're really on their way. They have $40. Here's your third question. How much of the 40 will you try? 20 What's the title of this song? You tell me your dream, you I'll tell, tell me you mine. You tell me your dream is right. They now have $60. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. You have $60, and how much will you try? The whole thing. The Wikes? Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. Setting along. Moonlight Bay. Moonlight, Moonlight Bay. Bay is on the nose. And they wind up with a grand total of $120. And that means the housewife and the motor vehicle man with $160. Get the chance of the $1,500 question. <laughs> The name Elgin American means the very finest quality, designing, finish, and craftsmanship. The best value. In exquisite compacts, gorgeous simulated pearls, magnificent dresser sets, magic action lighters, wondrous lighter cases, distinguished cigarette cases, handsome military sets, fascinating musical humidors. Your favorite store has a complete assortment of the newest Elgin American styles right now. See them. And for your own proud youth, for thrilling prestige gifts, always buy Elgin American. And here's the winning couple, Groucho, the housewife and the motor vehicle man. Well, back again to try for $1,500, eh? Good luck, and I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on the single answer between you, so talk it over thoroughly. And please, no help from the audience. One of our great presidents was the only man to occupy the office of Secretary of State and Secretary of War at the same time. What was this president's name? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Roosevelt. No, I'm sorry. It's James Monroe. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. But for beating our other two couples, Groucho, they each receive the amazing new Apollo 16-millimeter movie projector to show Hollywood sound movies and the moving pictures you take yourself. And in addition, you receive those lovely gifts from Elgin American, and you won $160. That makes it a very profitable evening all around. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. The Elgin American Show, You Bet Your Life, is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Remember, next week's big question pays $2,000. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for You Bet Your Life, starring Groucho Marx, presented by the creators of America's most beautiful compacts, smartest cigarette cases, and finest dresser sets, Elgin American. Good night, folks. Have you looked at your compact lately?